This is the second digital literacy in the English classroom video, all about creative writing. If you want to know why these videos exist, how you can use them, and if you may, have a look at the description below this video frame and please post any questions you might have. The school curriculum is becoming increasingly prescriptive, with less space for teachers to be creative and autonomous. Additionally, a focus on results and performance assessment, especially at high school level, has led to the questioning of the place of creative tasks in schools. Consequently, creative writing is one of the integral parts of literacy learning that is neglected. This is a pity, since creative writing could provide so many opportunities for touching multiple areas of the curriculum at once, while giving the teacher a chance to discuss and evaluate the array of digital technologies proliferating in the 21st century. This video will look at some of the strategies of integrating the digital into creative writing lessons in order for learners to engage critically with content, develop their identities, learn to understand themselves and others, engage English First Additional Language or FAL speakers, and provide one of the few opportunities for home literacy practices and even critical language awareness to enter the school classroom. Although I will be focusing on integrating digital resources and tools in creative writing and teaching, the use of non-digital resources should never be undervalued. Pen, paper, class performance, crayons and physical artifacts could all have powerful effects on writing and could be used in conjunction with the digital. You should adapt the methods for your context and most importantly, your learners. First things first, why do we tell stories? Why is it important to allow our learners to tell their stories, whether through writing, speaking, presenting, or even a video recording like digital storytelling? Storytelling has been emphasized as an activity connecting us to our identities. It is inextricably connected to being human. Moreover, stories often show us what it means to be human, how to understand people who are different from us, and of course, entertaining us as well. You could say that the more diverse and varied stories there are out there, the more chances for us to embrace difference, but also the better our chances of seeing the deep similarities between cultures and communities. Strange, but true. Have a look at Chimanda Ngozi Adichie's The Danger of a Single Story for her powerful view on the importance of multiple stories. Neil Gaiman's The View from the Cheap Seats gives strong arguments for why writing is important, while being quite entertaining and informative. Almost like an offbeat alternative creative writing textbook. So if creative writing is important, how do we teach it in the 21st century? As a warm-up exercise, you can allow learners to think critically about George Orwell's Animal Farm or any other piece of prescribed prose. Let them rewrite the book to fit the context of your local area, say Kai Licha, for example. It is always good to get learners speaking, especially in an FLL setting. So why not have the learners start their recontextualization by describing and indicating what Snowball or Napoleon would look like in their version? You can divide the class into groups, where each group has a chance to choose the facial features of the character, explaining to the class how they make their choices. The idea, of course, being that they make the character look more and more like themselves. They could then collaborate at home to write short character descriptions of the main characters using Google Docs. During a lesson in the next week, they can present their characters using PowerPoint, a good, authentic task. Since they do not have to pretend to be farm animals, they could perform a small part of the adaptation which will involve writing a short script. They can make a two-minute video on how their version ends. This will help them to think critically about how the new setting and characters change the original story. You want them to build on someone else's story by telling their own. Ideally, the rest of the class should watch and listen carefully in order to provide meaningful feedback. Talking about recontextualization, how would you change this method to suit your context? The second strategy is for grade eight and nine. To connect with poetry and critical language awareness, let them take one of the prescribed poems and identify the adjectives in the poem. They can then choose something 
they engage with at home, like a video game, a television series, or a movie, anything with an existing storyline, writing themselves into the plot using the adjectives they have identified. If they do not want to use something from home, they could write themselves into a backstory of the poem even. They could also describe a character that enters the plot of the chosen storyline uh, for just one scene, but who manages to change the story completely. Learners could present their writing as paragraphs, scripts, or essays, depending on the grade level. It could even be published on their personal or the classroom's blog as fan fiction. For grade 10 to 12, do a similar exercise, but let them play around with a poem and or their writing's tenses, so they could experience and describe the subsequent subtle shifts in tone and meaning. Lastly, you can take a short story and let them analyze its structure. Using online platforms like Pinterest or Instagram, depending on what your learners prefer, they can choose a picture, song, video, or even a recipe and use it as a secret symbolic object. The object could form the foundation for an individually or collaboratively written short story which mimics the structure of the short story they have analysed. They could present their stories to the class using physical props and or a slideshow that is projected on a screen. They could also make a digital story about it. Their original secret symbolic object should feature somewhere in their presentation and the rest of the class could guess what the object is afterwards. This makes it a bit of a game that will hopefully manage to retain the class's attention during the presentations. What kinds of literacy learning are we dealing with here? What are the benefits and the downfalls of having one task connect with multiple areas of the curriculum? If you have any alternative suggestions regarding how to go about this, especially things that you've seen working or not working in your classroom, please post them in the comments section below. We are trying to build a professional educators community, so kindly provide constructive comments that will help others. Subscribe to this channel to find out when the next video will be posted. Until then, be creative, be meaningful, and make sure it matters. Goodbye.